where have you come to in your in your search for truth? Where have you come to in your um, your inquiry in your in your sadhana? What have you actually discovered? You know, yeah. not how much you can talk about it or just really what have you learned? It's just that. It really is a very good point. We were talking about some people that read a lot of spiritual books uh -huh. and they have a lot of knowledge. Uh -huh. But that is to <clears throat> compare to the to the experience of itself. It is a uh, it is a very um, it's a very seductive um, thing, you know, that you the mind takes on the mode of learning, like learning and learning and learning. But it's really to help the person rather than to to transcend the person. As yet, m most people don't realize that the personal sense of self is uh, the lower self that um, that uh, can be and ought to be transcended in order to come to the fullness of what we truly are, you see. I don't feel that that knowledge, that fundamental knowledge, has really sprouted in the world as yet. We all have a, a strong conviction of the sense of personhood, that we are just our person, we are our egos. In fact, we can say like that, that we are our ego, and um, we don't, of course, we don't use the word ego in reference to ourselves. But what ego means is not merely that you are boastful and look at me and so on. Ego can also appear to be very humble and very nice. What ego means when I use the word ego is that you take yourself to be uh, your body and your um, conditioning, the conditioning that arose uh, with this body, that you are a particular kind of person, and that with the body that you are a man or a woman, and 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 that becomes your fundamental um, belief that this is what you are. I am this person, and when we indicate the person, we are really referring to um, a very uh, fluctuating, unstable state of being. And uh, as long as we have that conviction that we are merely our bodies and our mind or the conditioning that arises in the mind, you will only evolve within that paradigm, within that shape. But I want you to know that there are beings in the world who have transcended, who has gone beyond the limitations of personhood. And I'd like you to know that that is actually the real opportunity and person uh, and, and possibility of having uh, a human body, that here the consciousness is sufficiently capable of transcending the, the, the stage or the state of personhood and to return and to live inside its source, which is pure awareness. And if that has not been uh, introduced to you of that possibility, then it is being introduced to you now. Um, in the true state, which we call awakening to our true nature, or you may hear other terms like self-realization or uh, liberation, or so on. It actually means that, because as long as we are living in the limited state of personhood, um, we will live in the realm of judgments and fears and desire, and frustrations and hatred and division and. You know, it is a very unstable, very turbulent state of uh, mind and being. Our true nature is pure awareness beyond the mind. Now, you may feel, how can we speak about beyond the mind? Because the mind is all we know. Well, if the mind is all we know, even in saying that, the we who know the mind cannot be the mind. If something is known, 
you, you know something, I know this thing, that thing is not me. I, the knower, is who? So that knower is in fact consciousness. And we can explore and begin to discover the richness, the depth, the fullness of what it means to be fully conscious beyond merely limitations of body-mind. The body-mind is included in it, but is far beyond the scope of the body-mind self-reference. So, um, we are, in fact, and always been, the only fact that there is, that is unchanging in us, is that we are pure consciousness, or pure awareness. Meaning that all the interrelated uh, opposites that we perceive through the mind, uh, through our feelings and so on, they are observed as appearing within us. They come and go. We are not anything that come and go. And in fact, whatever you can say that you have learnt or perceived or seen or experienced has always been something come and go. Everything is coming and going. And even memory which you require to retain them, memory is also coming and going. What weaknesses the coming and going, the strength or the weakness of even memory? Reflect. And if you are drawn to such introspection, then you will find that a wonderful force begins to open up within you to take you deeper. Thank you. <laughs>